audio. Come on, come, come on in. If uh, if you're on the replay, you could just fast forward a bit. Just getting set up here. We're gonna get the people in here live. This is a special edition of Stock Talk Live. That's about to start. Sound the alarm. A L A R. We're gonna discuss the pre-announcement that they just put out. The research that we gave you all last week. It's gonna be a short live, but tune in. Um, valuable information on where we see the estimates going. Wall Street had the numbers wrong. We had the numbers right. Wall Street was at 7 million. We were at 8 million. The pre-announcement comes in at 8.3, which beats our number even. But you can see how Wall Street's got this all wrong. And we're going to discuss that uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes. So um, let's see if we can get this out. I'm just getting the invites out because this is not a regularly scheduled call but let's see we gotta get that out this is the stock research and we'll send this out to a few more so yeah hang tight we're gonna get this started in just a minute break out pro commentary okay there we go so we get should get some people coming in here now onto the live and we'll get started in just a couple minutes just getting people a chance to come into the live so stay tuned we are going to talk about ALAR right now okay we got a good attendance so we're ready to go okay cool welcome to a special edition of stock talk live on money mark for those who don't know if you are a newbie Go check out my last video from Friday. That's the regular show. Fridays at 2 every week. I am a retired multimillionaire uh, stock analyst. Had customers like Jim Cramer um, and George Soros and Fidelity, names you all know. Uh, I was giving stock picks to them. Was able to retire at age 38. And now I just give back a couple hours a week of my time to the general public to teach you how colleges and CNBC and Wall Street in general is trying to make money off of you, not by helping you make money. But anyways, let's get uh, into things. Um, first of all, obviously, if you like what you see, hit the like button. I don't care if you hit the subscribe button, uh, that'll just, but that'll get notify you when I come live. So that's for you, not me. For me, hit the live like button. That's the only way I make I don't even make money off of that. It's the only thing I ask of y'all. No subscriptions, no sponsorships, no nothing. Okay? I do this 100% for free. Um, this, read it on the screen. You know, this is the, the, the disclosures, the disclaimers, rather. Uh, I'm not a registered financial advisor. Suffice to say that this uh, whole show is a complete farce, a parody. Um, you know, nothing here is real. I can do anything I want despite what I say here, all that, you know, so if you're watching this, uh, you've read or had somebody read these disclaimers that are on the screen for you. All right. So that gets that out of the way. Um, let's get right into it. Here's the chart of Alarum going nuts. Obviously, it's been going nuts for a while. I've been talking about this stock um, since it had a one handle and now it's threatening a three handle. Here we are at 30, uh, $29 threatening the 30s. OK, why? Here's the news came out this morning. All right. And this was hot on the heels. All right, you see, estimates record quarterly revenue more than 8.3 million, operating cash flow 3.2 million. That's huge operating cash flow for a company with 8.3 million. That's a tremendous margin there. Okay, let's go here to the estimates last Friday. Okay, among other, and the Friday before that. And I've been talking about this company for a while now. Not an official pick, but it's been the unofficial picks that have been tearing things up. All right. I've got a strict set of criteria. All the checkbox has have to be hit before I make it an official pick. OK, things are moving too fast, as I've been telling you. And so when I give you these picks, I'll give you the numbers. I give you what I think the value should be. And you should take it as you wish. OK, so these are the picks. Um, these new picks have been going absolutely gangbusters. You can see Gatekeeper. 
the new official pick had a pullback, a 15% pullback. That was the final checkbox I was looking for to get in as an, you know, un as an official pick. And the unofficial picks also doing well. Um, so here you go. This is the number I gave you. Just, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been giving you this number. I've had this number for myself. I bought lots of shares of the stock before coming out. Obviously, I take care of myself and my family first, and then I give you the picks. But you can see for yourself what the results of that are. If we go to the presentation slides. Um, oh, no, no. We want to go to the... Oh, by the way, that's me for the newbies. But again, go watch Friday's video for all that information on how to find me, get all my picks and all that. Um, here we go. 39% annualized since the peak of the market in 2021. Easy money portfolio. That's the easy money conservative doing well. So we got all that going great. Okay. Um, forget what my point was here on Alarum, but let's get back to... See, that's what happens when you don't – we got the 8 million there, okay, um, that I've been estimating. Here are the estimates that the street has been at. Sorry for the confusion, by the way. I'm usually a little more prepared, but this is quick news. I want to get this out to you all uh, and the analysis. That's more, more important than me being eloquent. Um, street, 7.38. I told you this number was not only wrong but stupid. It just made no sense to me, okay, made no sense to me. And this number, how are they going to only do 7.9 when they just put up 8.3? Street numbers are going up. I told you that last week. I've been saying this for a while. This company is completely undiscovered. Still, here are my estimates. I got them at 10.8 for next quarter. Okay? They just put up 8.3, beating my number. All right? Where does that go on the annuals? I got them at 48 million for the year which puts us over $2 per share of EPS. Here's a company growing 140% annualized. 140% annualized top top line growth. Never mind the bottom line. The bottom line is, you know, infinite, you know, infinite. Uh, they were taking losses, you know, this time last year. Now it's massive profits. Okay? If you have got a company was in the AI space, growing 140% annually, with a subscription business model. I could give that a P of 100, to be honest. And I've got them doing over $2 of EPS. This could be a $200 stock, right? I'm not saying it's going to 200. That's not my style. I think, though, it is appropriate. I've been saying this for a while. This can be a $50, $60 stock. No problem. They just did... 8 million plus of revenue. The number that they give you there with the, um, the the operating cash flow, we're looking at over 50 cents of earnings. So they're already on a $2 run rate. The stock's trading at a PE of 14 on a $2 run rate. They could do $3. Okay? And on $3, the stock, honestly, should be well over 60 bucks if they do that. That's just the math. Okay. Now, why haven't I making an official pick? Look at it. Just look at the chart. It hasn't given us a pullback, and I like pullbacks to make my picks official. But to be unofficial, to reward the people who watch the show week after week, boom. I've been giving you the information you need to know to be in the stock. All right. So um, let's see what else you need to know about this situation. And by the way, if you have any questions on Alarm, put it in the chat. I just wanted to get this information out there. Um, Here's the in investor presentation. This presentation gives most of what I was needed what to build this model. Okay, they have recurring revenue, number one. So and number two, they tell us that their recurring revenue is not only it's not only that the customers are paying thousand dollars this quarter they'll pay a thousand dollars next quarter and a thousand no it's not like that they have something called NRR which is the equivalent of a dollar renewal rate which is right here on the screen and that's been accelerating that means for this right here 153 percent means that for every dollar that each customer all the customers across the board 
paid them last year, they're now paying $1.53. Okay? So not only are they renewing, they're renewing at a higher price. And this includes the non-renewals. So the folks that go away, the ones that stay are paying so much more that it still makes 153 the number. So on this alone, this alone, the revenue that they generated last year from the net nut product is going to generate a lot of revenue growth this year. This is why I said that the Wall Street estimate was so wrong. Because there's no way. The math just doesn't work. If you are generating, I mean, look at this. If you just look at this alone from 32 to 38, this means basically that if their existing customer base only pays them 20% more next year and they get no new customers, zero new customers, that's what it takes to go from 32 to 38. That's outlandish. That's stupid. I've got them doing 48 this year. Next year, something like 60. These street estimates are going way up from here. It's going to keep going up. And they just announced the new product. Okay, It is the anti-bot breaker. So basically, uh, just so for you guys understand what this company does and what this has to do with AI, AI obviously has completely sent through the roof the demand for data. All these LLMs, all these models that AI is built upon is predicated on pulling all the possible data off of the internet, okay? And those are the massive models, the chat GPT models. They want to take uh, they want to take the whole internet and have it in their databases if they can, right? But then you have these smaller models. What if you want to trade watches or uh, Jordans or baseball cards or what have you? These smaller opportunities to take advantage of a Rolex selling for 25000 here and selling for 35000 there, you can take advantage of that by scraping websites all over the world and seeing where you can get the cheapest Rolex to buy and sell it for the highest price, okay? And there's hundreds of people, only hundreds of people doing that using Alarm. Alarm's technology allows you to scrape all these sites without getting blocked, okay? Because if you want to get up-to-the-minute information, constantly get a refresh of all the data that's out there from all the sites, you got to keep hitting the site, hitting the site, hitting the site. If you do that with your computer at home, you are going to get blocked because your IP address is going to give you away as somebody who keeps hitting the site and not buying anything, especially you're not buying anything. Alarm allows you to bypass that because they have 86 million IP addresses that they loan out to you and dynamically recycle through to allow you to scrape that data over and over and over and over again without the company, without all of those websites knowing that you're doing it. Now, of course, when you go to some of these sites, they want to know are you a human? Here's the CAPTCHA. You know, CAPTCHA, click every box that has a bicycle in it. Click every box that has a bus in it. That's kind of stuff. All of those different types of things to test if you're a human, Alarum knows how to circumvent them and just released a product like a week ago. So the quarter was already over. They didn't even offer this product yet. Now they're offering that product on top of the IP address product. Now they're going to make even more revenue off of each customer with a brand new product to go into the customer base. The IP product alone is going to continue growing because of AI, because of the demands for data out there. They only have, again, 700 customers. That's nothing. Every single one of us could be an alarm customer for something or the other. There's an infinite number of products out there to be going out and scraping data on. Airline tickets, rental cars, you name it, any place, and for research as well. To go out and scrape the world for research, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be finding a way to enlist this technology to scrape different websites like the um, government sites when they announce contracts to scrape that data, bring it into some sort of database and have some AI analyze it and notify me when something comes up that looks like I can make money off of. This is going to just get more and more valuable. And this company was already doing pretty good before AI took off. But you can see, um, and actually, you know, the stock wasn't, right? But the net nut product was. 
And the, what sparked the stock to finally start rebounding back towards its older levels is that they got rid of a non-profitable business unit. Okay, so when you go to the model here, what you find is, go to the quarterly model, there we go. And you can see there's my net nut estimate relative to revenue. Okay, and you can see here that back in 2021, it was less than half of the total. Less than half of the total, less than half of the total. And then finally, March 2023, it's more than half of the total. More than half of the total. Now you can see it's 100% of the total. It's not 100%. It's pretty close, but I can't estimate exactly what it is. But management's told me it's virtually 100% of the revenue. So I'm putting it in as 100%. And that's because here at mid midpoint of the year last year, they got rid of this unprofitable unit. And you can see their operating income went from wildly negative, there you can see it, to boom, instantaneously profitable. This is what happens to many companies that have two or more business units where one is growing like crazy. And you can see right here, net nut year over year growth for over a year has been in the near the triple digit or above the triple digit range. 88, 97, 93, 200, 185. OK, these are massive growth numbers. Quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter, but the stock didn't start to respond because they had an unprofitable business unit making the whole business look unprofitable because it was. But all they had to do is just get rid of it, get rid of that business, and now all of a sudden it reveals this massively growing, massively profitable business. Okay, and that's why the stock is is re-rating to the upside because the street investors as a whole still don't know what this company is fully worth. Because really nobody covers them and nobody really understands the dynamics of them having gotten rid of that unprofitable business yet. Very few people do. I know professional people buying more of the stock today. Okay, I've got my position. I'm happy with my position. I'm tempted to buy more. Okay, but I've got my position. It's like I'm going to New York today. All right, but I do have friends in the Wall Street ranks buying this stock today. Because they're looking at the estimates and like, wow, they just blew away my expectations for this. They just put up 55 cents. That's $2.20 annualized. And the stock's trading in the 20s. That's ridiculous for a company trading in the triple uh, with, with triple digit growth. All right. So we're going to go to um, the Q&A. OK, I'm not answering questions about anything else on this particular call. I will come back live probably once I check in at the airport. I'm still analyzing the TPCS situation, OK, um, with the uh, acquisition that fell through this morning. OK, so I'll come back and uh, probably do a little mobile live a little bit later. But let's check the Q&A and see if anybody has any questions here. All right. I don't see any there, so I'm going I'm to give it a minute, though. But once again, Alarum, $8.3 in revenue coming up for the quarter, topping our estimates, destroying Wall Street's estimates. They were wrong, as I told you. Uh, operating cash flow, $3.2 million, tremendous profitability uh, coming to this company. By the way, there are those of you out there that, says that, there's, that say there's lots of competition for this product. I'm sorry. Um, you have to know the definition of competition, okay? Because um, I remember back in the day, there were like a million, look at this, there you go, verifying if you're a human. Um, there were a million ERP vendors, okay? But my company, right, I worked for an internet consulting company. I was an analyst there. That's what makes me knowledgeable about these things. This is what enables me to come out and tell you, you know, last year when everybody was poo-pooing NVIDIA, that I was like, no, you guys got it all wrong. NVIDIA is dominant and they're going to stay dominant and here's why. And I gave the reasons why. Okay. Um, you've got people out there. And, and by the way, at, this, at that very same time, they were talking about how consumer adoption of AI, like perplexity and Claude and apps like that, uh, was you know disappointing. Sure, that can be disappointing, but that doesn't mean that AI is going down the tubes. Don't be dumb. AI is here to stay. 
Make no mistake about that, okay? Um, and so we've got these companies that I've been bringing to you, OSSIF, ATGN. These are all picks that I am coming out with because of AI and what AI can do for these companies, all right? And as far as the analytics go, analyzing an industry, you have to be able to look at the company. Uh, and I was saying back in the day when I worked at AMR Research, being an analyst in the technology space, they said, oh, there's a million ERP vendors. Yeah, but there were only two that we saw as being truly dominant. It was SAP and Oracle. And you see now, you don't hear people talking about many other ERP vendors. A lot of them are dead or have been acquired. And it's all consolidated into basically SAP and Oracle who rule the world now on ERP. In this space right here, these ITP uh, proxy networks, you've got a lot of competition, yes, but only three at the top tier, okay? Only three that can really do what Alarm does, including Alarm, with them and two more, and that's cool. There's plenty of room for all three of them to grow like wildfire. In fact, they, all of them have customers that want to use all three of them in case you know they each do it a little bit differently. Each one of them gives them a better chance to get the data um, without being blocked, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so these guys are all getting business. Um, Alarum with the highest ratings from G2. That's a, an industry research uh, website where companies and customers of these products put out reviews. It's kind of like Yelp, but for technology. All right. So going back to the Q&A. Uh, so bottom line there, don't be afraid as far as that goes. We're going to monitor things. That's my job to make sure that you know, fears like, oh, there's lots of competition. Fears like people aren't adopting AI. You have to be able to figure out there's never 100% positive data points in a story. So you have to know how to weight the data points. Take the negative, take the positive, put them on a scale, and know which one is more important. So you don't get tricked out of a position. People that were shorting NVIDIA last year in the 400s, only for it to go into the 800s. All right, missing out on buying these stocks because you don't know the truth versus the fiction. And that's why you don't want to listen to CNBCs. You don't want to listen to college professors. I'm really sorry. Most of them don't know what they're doing. Otherwise, they'd be rich, multimillionaires, and retired, not professors. Okay. Um, all right. That's it for right now. There's no questions. I wanted to give you guys time for that. Um, stay tuned. I know this was a little, this, this was actually longer than it needed to be for what it was, but wanted to give you guys the breakdown there and a chance to an answer any questions if you had any. I'll be back uh, with the TPCS analysis pretty soon, positive or negative, we'll find out. I'm going through the details at, as we speak. Um, and of course, the full rundown. If you missed Friday's show, it was a monster. You could see the people in my chat rooms are telling, uh, are giving the great feedback they love the new format, that how I'm giving unofficial picks instead of holding on to them until they're official. So you guys are getting more picks, more analysis, more data every week on these picks, especially in AI where I have a special uh, connection with the technology industry going back to the 1990s that enables me. I was there in 1999. I made you know triple-digit returns, 350% on my money. Got in, was in 98, 99, told people to get out at the beginning of 2000 before the crash and right through the crash. And there's even reports out there showing you that I had came out with green shoots analysis back in 2002 to say, hey, now we're going to, now we're back. We're back for prime time. That's what I do. It's just technology. Whatever you do for a living, I'm guaranteed that you do that better than me. And this is what I do for a living. And now I just give it to you guys for free because I'm retired now. I'm getting ready to go to New York to the LD Micro Conference. For those who don't know, go watch um, the video from last week. But I've got a full, I mean from 8 a.m. Here's the full slate. 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. I'm booked. Every half hour meeting new, you look at the names on this list. They're all executive CEOs of companies. So that I can do the analysis, so that I can buy the stocks for me, my family, and friends, and give you 
these picks every Friday on Stock Talk Live at 2 p.m. One question in the comment, uh, like VTSI and EVLV, do you believe TPCS will have a similar comeback towards its value um, before this announcement? Peyton, like I said, I'll be back, right? Maybe you tuned in late. I said we're only talking about Alarum today, ALAR. I'll be back a little bit later once I check in at the airport, which I got to pack up and go to now and give you the analysis on TPCS. All right, so stay tuned for that. We'll check you guys later. Take care.